So if we say something like solve 3x minus 2 equals uh, 10, what is it? What does the word solve mean? I think it's important. Now. What's it mean? Find x. Find x. Okay. Find. When you say find, you're exactly right. When you say find x, you mean find the value of x that does what? Okay, that makes that true, right? Everybody agree? Okay. So we want to find the value of x. That's what solving means. We want to find the value of x. In this case, it, what if it were a different variable? Then it would be, you know, find the value of whatever that variable was. Find the value of x that satisfies the equation. And that's our math word for meaning it makes it true, right? So what do we do to solve that? You have a lot of experience with this. What are the steps you'd go through to, to solve for x? First thing you do is add 2 to both sides would be the first step. Then divide by 3. And, and you, you know that stuff well. Whether or not you even think about it, what you're doing is you're isolating by uh, reversing the order of operations, right? If we isolate or solve, we're just moving backwards up the order of operations tree. Easy. And if you can point to a single variable, you can always isolate it by doing that process, right? Working backwards through the order of operations. So in this case, we can point to it. And so our two steps were add to, divide by 3, x equals 4. Of course, we could always check on a test. How? Plugging it in to see if it actually did satisfy the equation. Did it really work? Right? OK, so what about, let's pick another one. How about something like this then? What if we had? 5x minus 2 equals 3x plus 11. Now there's more than one x. What do I do? Yeah, good. So I'm just going to combine like terms. So I'm going to simplify first until I get a single x. And then I'll reverse order of operations, right? So in which direction would I push the x's here? I'm going to push them left. because I. And what's your reasoning for that? You're right. Good. We want to have. We all want to end up with a positive number of x's. Good. So we would push the the three x term that way by subtracting three x from both sides, right? And then we get two x minus two equals eleven. What are the two steps in order now? First, I add two, and then divide by two, right? So if I add two, I get two x equals thirteen divide by 2, and I get x equals 13 halves. Do I want to write that as like uh, 6 and a half? No. no. We don't use mixed numbers. No, we just leave it like that, right? Just make sure that this fraction is reduced if you can, but just leave it as a fraction, as, a, as an improper fraction. That's the best answer. OK, what about, about something like this? Looks terrible. Multiple x's. But once again, what do I what do I do here? What do you think? Just, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna simplify, aren't I? I'm just gonna maybe I could and there's a lot of ways I could go with this, but one way is I could just distribute the three and distribute the two. How about? Right? So if I distribute the three, what do I get over here? Twenty-seven x minus six. And I got this plus four equals. 4x minus 10. Okay, I could do a little bit of, just to kind of clean things up here, I could combine some like terms, right? The negative 6 and the 4 would combine to, and the negative 10 and the 3 would combine to, okay, and now this looks just like the last one we did. So what are we going to do first? 4x 
minus okay, 1. Okay, good. I'm going to push the x's this way so I get a single x term. So we get a positive number of x's, right? And then I just end up with 23x minus 2 equals negative 3. What are the two steps in order to isolate x? Add 2, and divide. Add two then divide by 23, right? Done. Okay, no, you guys got that. That's no big deal. All right, but what about something like this, though? This is different. What if I have something like <clears throat> x squared uh, minus 10x plus... That's that's a whole different thing. That that's a whole different situation, isn't it? Now, can I point to a single x there? I, I I can't, right? I've got multiple x's, and this time, can I simplify and put them together? No. I can't. How come? Yeah, they're not like terms. In one case, the x is being squared, and in one case, it's not. So those those don't combine, right? So I'm stuck with that. So I can't use the old tried and true method of just reversing order of operations and isolating x. I've got to do something different, right? So this is what we call, and this is kind of what we're going to deal with, this unit. This is called a quadratic equation, right? And why is it quadratic? Because it's got an x squared term in it. In addition to the, the x term and the constant, it's got an x squared term, right? So we would say, and we'll talk more about that later, but for now, what are we going to do? We need a different strategy completely. Okay, there's a bunch of ways we can approach these. Now, one way, one technique is by factoring. Okay, do you remember what factoring is? Vaguely. Okay, let, let's take a second and let's, let's think about what factoring is, not with variables. Let's just think about it with numbers. So... 2 times 3 equals 6, right? Okay, so this is simplifying. We're starting with 2 times 3, and we're getting 6. But what if I just reverse that process? And I ask myself, what numbers could I multiply together to get 6? In other words, what factors, well, a product of what factors would give me 6? This is factoring, going this way. Factoring is taking something and breaking apart, breaking it apart into a product of two things that, that equal that, right? Does that make sense? So we'd say that 6 to factor would be to say that 6 equals 2 times 3. These are what we would call factors of 6. Okay, it's no big deal with numbers, but it's a little bit harder with variables, right? So what we want to do here is we want to see if we can break this apart into a product of two factors. But the factors are going to involve x's, right? Okay, now think, think about the process. The opposite process of simplifying or expanding is a lot easier. You guys know how to do that stuff. So let's work the other direction for a second. What if I started with, I'll just give you a different example. What if we started with, for example, um, I'll look down here. What if we started with the factors, oh, x minus 3 times x minus 7, and we wanted to expand those, multiply them out. What's the process by which I could do that? Do you remember? Great. Yeah, good. So we're going to distribute. Good. So you're just all you're going to do. And have you have you heard of FOIL? First, outer, and last. Yeah, you may have learned that. That you don't. If you didn't, I'm not going to teach you. All it is is just distributing. Uh, and if you learn FOIL, the problem with FOIL is it only applies to situations like this. But pretty soon we're going to be multiplying bigger factors together, and then FOIL doesn't work. But distributing always does. So we're just going to take a term from the first factor. So let's take x, for example. And we're just going to distribute that through. Now, what's that give us? 
x times x is x squared. x times negative 7? Negative 7x. Good. Uh, let's take the negative 3 and let's distribute that through, right? So the negative 3 times x is, okay, and negative 3 times negative 7 is? Okay, and if I combine all the like terms here, well, the x squared, there's only one x squared, but what about those? Negative 7x minus 3x, negative 10x, and then plus 21. So that's our answer if we multiply, right, if we expand. Uh, that's the opposite of factoring, right? That's not, we can do that. That's no big deal. I mean, everybody, we've done a lot of that stuff. But now the trick is, how do we go backwards? How do we start with something like this and break it apart? Well, for one thing, it may not always work. In fact, it usually won't. But when it does, it's a good idea. So how can we do that? Well, if I want to break this apart, if I want to undistribute it, what would the first two terms have to be if when I distribute this term to this term, I'm going to get an x squared? they got to be x's, don't they? So we can sort of guess right away that if the first term up here in my answer is an x squared, think about the process we went through. When I distributed the x to the x, I got my x squared, right? So we know that the first part of each factor has got to be an x, right? The question is, what are the numbers that go with it? Does anybody remember what the trick is for finding the numbers? It's really pretty easy. Uh, well, I want to multiply it to be the plus, and then we'll add together. From the ah, okay. So the numbers that we're finding here, these magic numbers, The numbers that go there and there, the numbers must do two things. They have to multiply to the constant. So in this case, the constant is 21. Everybody see? That's the constant is constant is just a number with no variable, right? Remember? Okay. And then the other thing they have to do is they have to add to the coefficient of x. So the number in the middle term that whatever's being multiplied by just x, not x squared. So what is it in this case? Negative 10, right? This is the number in front of the x, right? So I've got to find magic numbers that do that, that add, that multiply to 21 and add to negative 10, right? Now let's let's be smart about this though. Before we even jump into this, we can we can determine what the signs of the two numbers are going to be, right? If they're, what does it mean if they're going to multiply to a positive? What does that tell you about the signs of the two numbers? What kinds of numbers multiply to give you a positive? Negative. Both positive or both negative, right? So we know that they're not mixed. It's, they're, they're both the same sign. If they're going to add to a negative, which one of those would have to be the case? They'd have to both be negative, right? Everybody agree? So I know the two numbers are negative. They've got to multiply to 21 and add to negative 10. So then I just have to find them, right? So just think of the factors of the negative factors of 21. What am I going to get? Well, I get negative 21 times negative 1. What do they, what's that add to? Negative 22. Negative 22. It's too big, isn't it, right? <clears throat> and then I've got... Uh, what's the next one? Negative. Well, what, what if I, I'm going to keep the left column is going to go down. It's going to get progressively smaller, and the right column is going to get progressively bigger. So let's just ask ourselves, does 2 go into 21? No. 21's odd, right? Does 3? It does. So negative 3 times what is, negative, is positive 21? 7. Negative 7. And that works, doesn't it? Right? So we get the answer uh, negative 10, right? So that does the job. That multiplies to positive 21 
and adds to negative 10. So those are my magic numbers, right? So then we get a minus 7 and a minus 3. <coughs> okay, so people are getting distracted. That's a bad idea because you got to continue this train of thought. So is everybody okay with where we are here? Yes. Right? So all we did was we, we factored. We broke this apart into a product. Our trick, once again, if the number in front of x squared is 1, this is pretty easy. <clears throat> We're not even really going to deal with the other one, the other alternative. If the number in front of x squared is 1, then we know right away that if it factors, the first term of each factor is just an x. Then the goal is, can we find numbers that multiply to 21, the constant, and add to the coefficient of x, negative 10? Either we can or we can't. If we can, factoring works. If we can't, it doesn't. And we, we have to do something else, which we'll learn. Okay? So what good does this do us, though? So now we're at this point right here. Why is this useful? Oops. So we had the original problem, x squared minus 10x plus 21 equals 0. And we broke that apart into the factors x minus 7 and x minus 3. <clears throat> so we're going to have to do, we need a little warm up though. I feel like maybe we're not hitting on all cylinders today. Okay, try this real quick. Try this on your own. Uh, let's, let's see, let's just do some mental arithmetic. No writing it down, just do this all in your head. Okay, so 2 plus 5, don't say anything out loud, just do it in your head. That result times 3. Okay, minus 4 times 17.134. Come on now, let's go. Times 3,194.9234. Well, oh, come on now, come on, keep going. You can do it. I got it. Okay, okay times 0 equals 0. zero. zero. Oh, okay, all right. So, point being that it doesn't matter how complicated the number is. If you multiply by 0, the answer is 0. Okay, so then look at this here. If... <laughs> If I've got a product of two factors that equals zero, what's the only way that a product can equal zero? If you, okay, if you multiply by zero, right? So there's two possibilities. The only ways that this product can equal zero, the only ways, because there's only that's the all only possible way to get zero as a product is by multiplying by zero. So either one of two things is happening. Either x minus seven has to equal zero, right? Or x minus 3 has to equal 0, right? Okay, find those solutions for me real quick. It's easy. Good business. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Don't worry. So, okay, so does everybody see then? What are the solutions going to be here? 73. Okay, so, right. If, if I solve this equation, right, if I, I know that in order for x minus 7 to equal 0, x equals 7. Or for x minus 3 to equal 0, x equals 3. Okay, this is the fancy word for this. This is called the zero product property, right? The zero product property just tells us that the only way a product can equal 0 is when one of the individual factors is equal to 0. And because we have a variable here, we have, to, we have to look for the possible ways that either one of these two factors could equal zero because that either one would work, right? If this one is zero, then the product is zero. Or if this one is zero, then the product is zero. So we're just finding the values of x that would make that happen, right? That's it. That's, that's factoring. So factoring, that might seem a little complicated first time through. And you've done this before, but it's probably been a while, right? But that's easy. That is, when, when we're going to be faced with a menu of choices of how do we solve a quadratic equation, this is a great choice because it's pretty simple, right? So try another one. Try another one. Try this. Okay, go. Try that. No, Kobe. We have two. We have two. 
No Trevor again? Solve that. I want you guys to solve that. And if you need to, you know, consult your neighbor, that's fine. But I want to see if you can solve that equation. Say it again. Yeah, you're going to have to. Right. So you're going to factor it. You're going to use that process that we just talked about. We're going to try to factor it and then use the zero product property. <laughs> No, get your notes out. Okay, but I'm gonna give you a harder one in a second. Get your notes out. I want you guys to have your right stuff down. I know, I know you. Know. Okay, so let's let's walk through this. So. The, the goal here is to see if factoring works. If we can find magic numbers, then this works. If not, we can't. <coughs> so the question is, can we do this? What's the first term of each factor have to be? Uh, yes. So we know yes. we've got X's there. The question is, do we have magic numbers? What do they have to multiply to? 12. What do they have to add to? Okay, so if they multiply to a positive, that means the signs are the same, right? If they add to a positive, it means that they're both positive. So what are they? 3 and 4. So are 3 and 4 the solutions to this equation or this problem? No. No? Because what do I have to do? You have to factor. Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to then find what makes each of these factors equal to 0. I would say that in most cases, you don't even have to write this work down. Just ask yourself, what value of x is going to make x plus 3 equal 0? Negative 3. Negative 3, right? Negative 3 plus 3 would give me 0, right? So x equals negative 3, or what value is going to make x plus 4 0? Negative 4. There you go. Okay, another one. Try this one. Okay, so we write our template out, right? And you all know when I say template, you know what I mean, right? Template is just like a, did I mention this? What, what's a template? When you say a template, if you're going to go to Microsoft and find a template for a resume, what are you doing? You're, you're just kind of finding a blank one to fill out, right? So a template is just a setup that you can fill in the blanks, right? So this is our this is our template, right? We know we've got x's here. We just have to find numbers. Okay, now let's play the sign game. Don't rush into this. Play the sign game. Get the signs out of this. If the two numbers multiply to a negative, what's that tell you about the signs? They're opposites. They're opposites, right? Okay, now we know one other thing here. If if they multiply to a negative but they add to a positive, we know that they're opposite signs. But which one has to be the dominant one or the bigger one? It's positive. The positive, right? Because when we add them up, the result is going to be positive, which means the negative got canceled, right? So let's always put the biggest one first. Go find those numbers. So what would they be? Numbers that multiply to negative 36 and add to 5. 11 and 6. 11 and 6 don't multiply to 6. Negative, right? Negative 4. Plus 9, negative 4. Okay, so it's going to be positive 9. And negative 4. And if you're not sure, just make a list, right? If you're not sure, just, just write negative 36 and, and work down. Start with bigger positives, right? Because we know the positives have to dominate. So we can start with positive 36 times negative 1, not going to work. Uh, positive 18 times negative 2, not going to work. Uh, what's the next one? Um, 12. We can start with, then we can do positive 12 times negative 3. Still not going to work. That adds up to 9, right? But then the next one works. That one works. That adds up to 5. So that's the winner, right? Okay, and so then what's our solution going to be? Savannah, what's the value of x that's going to make this factor 0? 
What would x have to be for that factor? Negative, negative 9. How about this factor? Reese, what's the one that's good? What's the, what's the value of x that makes that factor 0? 4. 4, yeah. OK? Good? Got it? OK, this one, you'll get practice with those. So, so this one looks different. It might look harder, but it's actually easier. There's only two terms, right? Okay, there's another trick that we always want to do. We haven't had two yet, but here we need to. It always makes life easier when you're factoring if you can factor out the greatest common factor. So we want to factor out, we want to factor out the biggest number that goes into all the numbers, and we want to factor out the greatest common power of x, right? So let's focus on the numbers. What's the biggest number that goes into both 3 and 12? Three, right? And we always want to keep the sign, whatever the, the, the lead term is, the term, whatever the coefficient of the biggest power of x is, if we're factoring out a greatest common factor, take out that sign with it, right? So we're going to factor out a negative 3, okay? That's one thing that we're going to factor out. Uh, what's the biggest common power of x? In other words, what's the weakest term up there, how many powers of x can it give away? One, right? I've got an x squared and an x. So the biggest common power of x would just be x, right? Another way of thinking about that is I could strip away an x from this one and an x from that one, but I can't take an x squared away from that one. It doesn't have it to give, right? So I can factor out an x. What does it mean to factor out a greatest common factor? It's really just undistributed. That's all it is. So if I undistribute this from both terms, what am I left with? Ask yourself the question, negative 3 times what is negative 3? 1, right? So the coefficient of the first term is going to be a 1. x times what is x squared? x. So the first term is just going to be 1x. We'd erase the 1, though, right? We don't write a 1 there. What about the next term? Negative 3 times what is 12? Negative, negative 4, right? Another way of thinking about it is 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. Same thing. x times what is x? 1, right? So that's my factor of answer. Everybody see that? I've just undistributed a negative 3x and left myself with this, right? OK, so if that's equal to 0, now this is pretty simple. What's the value of x that makes negative 3x 0? 4. No, no. That makes this factor 0. 0. 0, right? Only way I can make negative 3 times x 0 is if x is 0, right? I could show that if I want to. I could just instead, if you're ever unsure, just set the factor equal to 0 and solve. So I could just write negative 3x equals 0 and solve. Well, I just divide both sides by negative 3. And I get x equals 0 divided by, who cares? 0 divided by anything is 0. zero. So that's one solution. Okay. What about this one? What's the value of x that makes this factor 0? 4. So those are my two solutions, x equals 0 or x equals 4, right? OK, let's try one more. Is this coming back now a little bit? It's been a while. I know it's been a while. OK, try this. How about That's supposed to be a 2, and that's supposed to be an 84. OK? So always, always see if you can factor out a greatest common factor. Is there a number that goes into 2 and 2 and 84? 2, right? 
So I know I can pull a 2 out front. Is there a power of x I can strip away from all those? Just, just x, right? So I can pull all that stuff out front. The sign of the first term is positive, so I'll just leave that positive. Now, what am I left with if I do that? What's the first term going to What am I left with there? What would I have to multiply 2x by to get x cubed? x squared. Everybody see that? And if I'm not sure, just ask yourself the question, well, what is 2x cubed divided by 2x? Because when I factor something out, I'm really just dividing, each, dividing it away from each term. So if I divide that, the 2's cancel, and x cubed over x gives me x squared. But personally, I think it's easier just to always ask yourself, 2 times what is 2? 1. X times what is x cubed? X squared. Isn't that easier? I think it is. OK, plus, what about here? 2 x. times what is 2? 1. X times what is x squared? X. 2 times what is negative 84? Negative 42. And x times what is x? Well, 1, right? So 42 times 1 is just 42, right? You got it? So now we've got one factor already done out front, but I've got to break this apart, right? This is what we call a quadratic factor. It's got an x squared and an x in it, so we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to try to split this one apart. So that guy's taken care of, but the question is, can this one be split apart? Are there magic numbers that multiply to what? <coughs> Seven and six. Okay, multiply to what number? Zero. No, no, multi negative up here. 42. Multiply to negative 42. Negative 42. got to multiply to the constant and add to, what's the number in front of x there? One. One. Good, there's a one there, isn't there? So they got to multiply to 42 and add to one. Negative 42 and add to one. So if they're multiplying, now think about this. We can be really smart about this. If they're multiplying to a negative, what do you know about the signs of the two? Tanner, what do you know about the signs of the two if they multiply to a negative? Opposite. opposite signs. They're adding to positive one. So which one's bigger, the positive or the negative? Positive. How much bigger is it? By one. By one. One, right? It's only bigger by one. So just think of numbers that are separated by one that multiply to 42. Well, we can just try them. Six times five doesn't work, but six times seven does, right? Six times seven multiplies to 42. Right? So I must have the bigger one is positive and the lesser one is negative. Right? And that's all equal to zero. So by the zero product property then, all we have to do is find the individual zeros of those factors. Find the values that make each factor zero. So what's the first one going to be? Zero. Zero. Yeah, two times x equals zero only when x is zero. And you notice a trend there. Whenever you have a factor, a, a greatest common factor that has only an x by itself, maybe times something, it's always 0, isn't it? The solution is 0. So x equals 0, or what's the next one? Negative 6. Or x Plus equals, six. yeah, we got them. Right? No big deal, right? Do you guys remember bottoms up? Did you ever learn bottoms up? You did teach us. I did earlier. I showed know. you bottoms last up. Last oh, year. last year. Yeah. OK. The, just so you know, everything we've done up to this point is really what I care about. I don't really care about this next thing very much at all. But just so you can answer this question on like an SAT test, uh, I, I want to show it to you. It's not a big deal, but but this one is don't if this confuses you and you feel like you know don't worry about this one as much. This is the stuff I'm concerned about. Okay, bottoms up works like this. If I've got something like uh, let's say what could I do here? So if I had
Okay. So if I want to factor this, first thing I always want to do is see if there's a greatest common factor. But is there a number that divides into 3 and 13 and 10? One. Other than 1, right, just 1. So that doesn't do us any good. And I can't, there's no power of x that I can strip away from all those because this one doesn't even have an x, right? Okay, so, so bottoms up then. Bottoms up just says this. Bottoms up says that first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out if I think of this as a quadratic equation in standard form, it's just it's always in this form. A, a is the number times x squared, b is the number times x, and c is the constant, right? So if we think of it that way, a is 3, b is 13, c is negative 10, right? We want to find what's the product of a times c. It's negative 30, isn't it? Okay. Uh, what's B? 13. Okay, so I want to find numbers that multiply to AC and add to B. So can I find numbers that multiply to AC? So multiply to negative 30. So I have to have a positive and a negative, right? And add to 13. So the positive is going to be bigger, right? So let's, let's take negative 30 and find its factors where the positive is bigger. 15 and negative so, 2. Yeah, so I'm, I'd have 30 times negative 1. That doesn't work. That adds to 29. But if I do 15 and negative 2, that does work, doesn't it? I get positive 13. So those are my numbers, right? 15 and negative 2. So here's what bottoms up says. Really simple. What bottoms up says then is we're going to start off with our preliminary factors. They're just going to be kind of like what they were before. I've got x's out front. And then whatever these numbers are, I'm just going to divide those by a. Okay, so whatever's out front, we divide each number by that. So here I've got plus 15 over 3 and minus 2 over 3. Okay, then all we do is I look at those fractions and I see if I could simplify them. Two-thirds I'm stuck with, right? That one won't simplify, but 15 over 3 does reduce to what? Five. five. Okay, so I'd rewrite this as x plus 5 times x minus two-thirds. This one is done. All I do if I end up with a fraction in my answer is I go bottoms up. I just take whatever number is in the denominator and I move it up in front of the x. And so my final answer would just be x plus 5 times 3x minus 2, right? Okay, so now look what we're doing here. I know this is a lot. This is a lot. This is what we're done. Now I'll let you guys practice this tomorrow. So we got to find the zeros. This one's easy. What's the value of x, Richard, that's going to make that first factor 0? Negative 5. Okay, this one's a little bit tougher. This one you might actually want to set equal to 0. So if I set 3x minus 2 equal to 0, what are the two steps to solve for x? Well, add, two, add 2, good. And then divide by 3. And so you get x equals 2 thirds. So those are my answers. 2 thirds and negative 5. So okay. instead of doing bottoms up, should you write 2 thirds instead of negative 2 thirds? Right. It, you, you could. You know, actually, you could if you're just solving it. If you're trying to factor it, then you need to. You need to write it this way. But, yeah. Okay, good job. I'll put a little practice assignment up you can work on. Can you request me? Yes, I can.